Hello and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. So today we're going to take a step back. I want to start doing some videos that are going to be a little bit more accessible for people that are just getting into the hobby, which is definitely a group that I want to focus on pretty heavily because that's a big part of the reason why I created this channel. I want this hobby to be available to anybody that wants to get into it. And I think that the versatility that this gives to any tabletop gaming is just amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the absolute basics of Cura. And if you've been printing for a little while, this may be a little bit below your skill level, but if you're looking for a video that'll help you get a better understanding of Cura and give you a better foundation, then hopefully this will help you. Okay, so first what we're going to talk about is how to remove your micro SD card from your printer, put it into your adapter, and then get that over to your computer. So to start with, obviously you need to know where your micro SD card slot is. Most printers, it's towards the front. On this Lotmax SC10 and on the Ender 3, they're both right up at the front. You'll have to check your specific printer manufacturer details to discover the exact location of yours, but it can be a little bit difficult to find because they are pretty small. But like I said, on this uh, SC10 here, it's right here on the front. You just gently press in, you'll feel it kind of click and pop back out, so it has kind of the spring action to it. You'll notice that on most of these printers, at least the ones that I've used, they do come out upside down. They are both inserted and uh, retracted upside down. So make sure you're putting it back in. It does only go in one way, and you definitely don't want to put it in backwards and end up breaking those little pins. So most of these printers do ship with this USB adapter, which is really handy because all you have to do is put this little micro SD card back into the slot in the back of this adapter, and then you can plug the USB adapter into any port in your computer. And then from there, I'll show you guys how to rename your card, how to transfer files over to it, all that good stuff. So we're going to start at the very, very beginning. We're going to go into a browser. We're going to go to C-U-R-A, Cura. Now just search for that, and the first link that should come up should be this powerful, easy-to-use 3D printing software. Click on that. Then here you'll see this blue box that says download for free. Click that, and it'll bring up you know, your three choices here. Now, I can't speak to how the Mac OS version or the Linux version work because I have not used them. I have no reason to assume that they would work any differently, but just wanted to give that brief disclaimer. I'm gonna be talking about the Windows version because that's what I know. So we're gonna hit download now, and this will bring up a Windows dialog box or a, a Windows directory asking where you want to download this to. Now. If you've messed with your download files, or your download path rather, then this will probably go to somewhere specific. But if you haven't, then it'll most likely go to your downloads folder. You can see I have a, um, an installer for an earlier version of Cura in here. I would recommend, just to make it easy to find, I would put it on your desktop. Then you're gonna hit save. Depending on your internet connection, this could take a few seconds to a few minutes. So once that's downloaded, the reason that it has that icon there is because Windows is asking you to provide additional permissions to install it. So as long as it's a program you know has come from a verified manufacturer, there's no issues with doing this. So you right click, hit run as administrator, and this will pop up. You're going to hit yes, then next, and we're going to leave pretty much all the presets here the way that they are, all the defaults, because it does a pretty good job of installing where it needs to and you won't really have to worry much about it. So we're just going to hit next, install. And this can, again, it'll take a few minutes depending on your computer. So we'll come back when this is done. Okay, so now that this is finished, we're going to hit finish. And it will say, uh, this box here will say run Ultimaker Cura 4.5. We'll leave that checked. Or it'll say whatever version is the current version. So hit finish. Then next it will bring up a window asking us to select our printer. Okay, so now that that's loaded in, we're going to hit get started. Uh, once you read through their user agreement, I agree. And then there's going to be some information on here about what's changed, if anything, uh, depending on what version you're installing. Like I said, depending on when you watch this video, this may not be the most current version. So next, you can read through some of this information here if you'd like. Next, okay, so from here is where we're going to select our printer. Now, most likely your printer is not going to be in the network. If you know how to do that, then this video is probably not going to help you much because that's a little bit more advanced than what we're going to be getting into. So what we're going to be looking for here is add a non-network printer. This is where you're going to tell Cura what printer you're using so it understands how to organize the files information to print well on your machine. 
So you're going to hit add a non-network printer. Now this is where it's important to know, no, I'll maximize this to give us a little bit more visual here. This is where it's important to know who makes your printer. So for example, you can't just put in Ender 3, you would want to look for Creality Ender 3, because that's the brand that makes this printer, or makes uh, the Ender 3 rather. So that's one of the most popular ones, that's why I use that as an example. Um, I'm actually going to be looking for a Lotmax SE10. It's a, a sort of unknown printer that I'm going to be working with in the next couple of videos here, so that's what I'm going to be selecting. So I'm going to go down to Lotmax, which is going to be pretty far down here. So I'm going to use a slider here to go a little faster. Keep going down, I want to make sure I don't miss it. There it is. So there's Lotmax. And there we go. So you want to make sure that your printer is selected, Lotmax SE10. Again, like I said, you want to find the manufacturer of your printer, open up the drop down, and then find your specific model. And we're going to hit next. And it'll take a couple of minutes to prepare. Again, it's explaining you can sign in here to um, their cloud. It's worth doing, it gives you some pretty cool features. I'm going to skip it for now just for time's sake, but it's a pretty straightforward process. I'm just going to hit finish. All right, and so from here, what you have is a three dimensional representation of what your printer's build platform will be. So this area is actually grayed out here. This represents, um, it's a small variance that they build into the printer's uh, build plate to give um, a little bit of room for things like bed clips or sometimes the, the strain relief on the wire back here will overlap on the, the bed a little bit. So they, they give you this, this outline here. It's usually about 15 millimeters, I believe. And that is just to make sure that the nozzle of your hot end doesn't bang into the clips that you use to hold on the bed or like I said, that strain relief. Now we can adjust that later, but that will be something that we'll be talking about in a different video. For now, like I said, we're gonna be getting into just the basics. So along those lines, what I recommend is starting with a support list model because supports are a little bit of a different animal when it comes to printing. So you wanna make sure that you have the basics and the fundamentals down first, and then worry about supports. So we're gonna be doing this in steps. So we will be doing a video on supports, and that's gonna most likely be almost it's it entirely its own video because it is it can get pretty overwhelming so we want to make sure we take it one step at a time here so to that end we're going to jump on over to a site called Thingiverse where we're going to get our model so a couple of notes about Thingiverse first and foremost if you like what you see and you're going to be using this model I highly recommend just tipping the designer it's a really nice way to say thank you for the time and effort they put into creating this really cool model that you're going to be using for your games Second, I would recommend creating an account on Thingiverse because I find it really useful to be able to search around on my phone for models that I'm looking for, even just cool new things that I didn't know existed, be able to use the like feature, and then open my account up on my computer and download that stuff really quickly. The last note that I'll make about Thingiverse is that it is a bit buggy, so there are times where it's going to run a little slow or you might have errors downloading stuff. Just try to be patient, refresh it. It's stuck around this long because despite it having some bugs, we all see that it's a really great site that has a ton of value, so just, like I said, be patient with it. So this model is the Barkeeper model by Vivictus Miniatures. It's really great. I'm super excited to be able to print it for this video and they do have a Patreon. Their stuff is great. If you like what you see, as always, it'll be down in the description below. Jump on their Patreon and support them. So downloading from Thingiverse is super easy. You're just gonna hit download all files. It's gonna bring this window up. We're gonna make sure the desktop is selected because it makes it easy to download, or easy to find after we download, rather. Hit save. Now, normally it would come up with the name of the file. This one just has a string of numbers. It's not a big deal. It's so a little sidebar here. I personally really like to have my stuff organized as much as I can. And if you guys are like me and you want your stuff to be organized, when you start downloading things from Thingiverse, it's gonna be like a bug. It's, it's super addictive. You see all this really cool stuff you wanna print, so you download you know, 10, 20, 30 files at a time and you're super excited about it. And then all of a sudden, you close out a Thingiverse and realize that your desktop is just full of files and you have to then sit there and organize them. So what I recommend to kind of help with that process a little bit is right clicking, going to new, hit folder, and we're just gonna name this, obviously you guys can call it whatever you want, but I usually say STL because the file format that you're gonna download from Thingiverse is called an STL. 
And what that means is it's a file that three-dimensional programs or 3D programs can open up and Kira is going to be able to read. Now the files that Kira puts out are not STLs, but we'll get into that in a little bit. So, like I said, you can call it whatever you want, but that's going to be where we're going to put all of our files from now on. And then I'm going to go inside and create another folder that I'm going to call Barkeeper. So, now we have our file that we can keep nice and neat and organized, and then inside we can put all of our subfiles for, you know, or subfolders rather, for all the files that we're going to be downloading. So the reason that the file that we got from Thingiverse has a zipper symbol on it is because it is a zipped file. Go figure. I believe that Windows has a program for opening this, but if they don't, it's super easy. You're just going to go back to your browser, and you're going to type in the number 7-Z-I-P, 7-Zip. It's a great program that I've been using for years. It's free. It's a really low impact. I highly recommend it. And this program is just literally just download, install, and it works. So there's really not much there. And then you're going to be able to open this file or folder, just like any other folder. And now inside, you're going to find your directory for everything you got from Thingiverse. Now, going from the bottom up, you have your README. This is where the creator is going to put their notes for if they have a specific way that they printed or the settings that they used or any information that they think will be helpful for you printing it. This one's blank just because I'm assuming that this is a, a pretty easy model so they didn't really feel it needed a lot of notes. All right, so we're going to go up into our license here. Now, again, this is mostly blank, but basically the way that the license agreement off Thingiverse works is that you are allowed to download these files, you're allowed to print these models, you're allowed to use them for your gaming, you're just not allowed to sell them. So that goes for pretty much everything on Thingiverse. You're not allowed to sell them, you're not allowed to make a profit off of it, just print it for fun. You can print it and give it away, you're just not allowed to sell it. Um, that also applies to Patreons as well. If you subscribe to a Patreon, don't send those files to your buddy who also hasn't subscribed to it because, you know, they're whatever. They just, they're interested and they want those files. Say no. Say no to drugs, kids. Also, say no to sharing Patreon files that other people haven't paid for because it's not cool and it really is just so disrespectful to the artist. I really love these models and I hope you guys do too and the worst thing that you can do for those artists is not give back to them by sharing their files with somebody who isn't paying for it. Alright, moving on. Sorry, I got really serious there but that's a pet peeve of mine. Now we go to the image file and normally this would have the images that we saw in Thingiverse. So these ones here but for whatever reason they're not in this file. I don't know if this is a new thing that Thingiverse is doing or if it's just this particular model, but normally these two images would be in that folder, so you can kind of use them as a reference, but it's not a big deal. You can just go back to the site if you want to look at them. Now from here, we're going to look at files, and this is where you would have as many files as the model is made up of, or you might have, you know, Barkeeper version 1, Barkeeper version 2, if the artist has made any kind of adjustments later on and they wanted to keep both versions. Uh, but in this case, obviously, we only have the one because it's just the one supportless model. And we're going to click and drag that over to our desktop folder that we created. So our overarching folder is this STL, and then the subfolder is Barkeep. And I missed my target there. So 